Hi guys, today I want to talk about the new decision by the government on reducing the MEP of Basmati. Basmati Chawal Ring minimum export price cut for Basmati. Minimum export price for Basmati to $950 per ton FOB, 27th October 2023. Now, I'm making this video because I want to talk about a few context as to how does this affect, how does this change the exporters business the rise outlook from india and a lot of things firstly let me do one thing let me talk about why in the first place something like an mep was introduced by the government in the first place this all started one year back 9th september 2022 india first announced duty on white rice followed by ban on broken rice followed by ban on white rice and now duty on parboiled rice right so the government fears that a lot of exporters would file their rice shipments as basmati and avoid the duty and export it. A lot of exporters might file white rice as basmati rice and export it out of India. right? So to control this, the government kept with step number one. Let us put an MEP on value of the rice shipments. Because white rice you sell wherever, the FOB price at that time used to be roughly around 400 something dollars per ton. But Basmati is 1,200 which is now bought down to 950. So there is a huge difference, almost more than double from 450 to 950, right? So the government said your minimum filing should be 950 for Basmati. Which means when you say that the price is going to be minimum 950 dollars that has to be filed FOB, that means what? One gyara iki is jo bolte hain, 1121 Basmati rice, the high quality Basmati rice only can be exported might be slight chance that 1500 no which is 1509 basmati which is in the range of 75 78 to 80 rupees per kg x mil probably can be exported right which means any rice below this any rice which is below this price cannot be exported because the government said the minimum MEP. but then there was one more way out the exporters started to take what exporters probably did I'm not uh, uh, accusing anybody of something. This is how government takes its measures. So what government thought is that people are filing for normal non-Basmati rice. They are filing it as say $950 or uh, 1200 dollars But then when you are shipping, you are still shipping say for example a Sona Masuri rice. So, but then when you are sending a bill to the customer, the invoice to the customer, you are sending the invoice to the customer at for say 400 or 500 dollars per ton. So when your payment comes, your payment is coming at say 500, 400 dollars per ton, but your shipping bill was of, of about 1200 or 950 dollars per ton, right? So then who is going to ask why you got less money compared to your shipping bill? The bank is going to ask. The bank is going to ask that your shipping bill filed was for 1200 you are getting a payment of say, say 500 dollars per ton why is this mismatch and then the bank is going to tell i can't close your ebrc on the edpms portal by the rbi right but this happens later when the payment comes then the exporter might give some reason my half of my funds is stuck with the customer it is going to come in a few days etc etc and they keep doing the shipment so this is one loophole that the government noticed that this could be there so what did the government do is the government came with step number two the step number two is the government said once your cargo is in the customs bonded warehouse in the cfs the customs, the APIDA department will do a test of the rice to determine whether it is really basmati or not. And how can you do it? I mean, the easiest way to do this is check the grain length of rice. Because basmati, the grain length is anywhere upwards of 7.5 mm uh, is the length, right? Anything 7.5 and upwards, it is safe, it is basmati. So if it is a Sona Masuri, suddenly what happens when you check the length of the grain, it becomes like 5.5 mm, 5.5 mm, then it is definitely not a basmati, right? This test report was required. So there is a test report which says this is a basmati rice, it is allowed to export. Or this is Sona Masuri rice or any other rice which is not basmati, this is not allowed to export. These kind of measures that the government came with. So this is just to set a context right now as to why government came up with MEP and this APIDA test. Following this today's news that has come by the government, which is $950 MEP. So what, what will change from the 1200? The only change is now 
along with 1121 basmati we can probably also export you know uh, 1500 no 1509 basmati 1718 basmati you know 1401 basmati these kind of premium varieties can still be exported earlier it was only 1121 because only that was having the higher price of 1200 but there are some varieties which are still can't be you know exported because of its MEP which is what all the brokens of basmati jo tibar dubar tukda ya mogra jo bolte hain all these varieties are not you still can't export because its value is less than 950 dollars the pr11 the pr26 basically anyway it is a long run but not a, you know a, a basmati variant anyway but because of its price now that cannot be exported there are two other varieties jo friends hain saath mein chalte hain sugandha and sharbati ye do variety bhi export nahi ho sakta hai kyunki its price is also below the 950 mark right so these varieties still will you know struggle and will not be able to export and a lot of farmers who grow these varieties might feel a bit of feeling of uh, being stuck and getting a market for the rice etc etc well what i'm going to do also do to make you understand as to why i arrived as these varieties i have my calculator here with me so 950 dollars 950 dollars into say today's conversion rate say let's say for example 83 rupees 950 into 83 is 78,850 which means whichever rice and this is FOB which means what this price is FOB at the port assume Mundra port because the rice comes from Punjab, Muktsar, Karnal in Haryana, UP etc. So this 78.8 rupees price is FOB at the port so from the 78 rupees uh, FOB, I will minus at least 6 rupees because might be 2 rupees for transport from Punjab to Mundra and then the local CFS charges, the local agency charges, etc, etc is about 6 rupees. So I'm going to deduct 6 rupees. So I'm arriving at 72 rupees a kg, meaning any basmati rice which is X mil, 70 X mil or X factory, which is 72 rupees or upwards will be getting green signal to export from India. So this is what MEP means. And you know, the, the only last thing I want to end this video is a very, very sad story. The thing is, the government did this with all good spirit. The government did, did this with prime focus to be the domestic market and so that the government safeguards the food security measures are met. The prices shouldn't shoot up too high that the local Indian population struggle to buy the rice at a higher price. So the price had to be controlled which was almost soaring at very high prices. So the, the, go the good thing is that the government did this because the government wanted to control prices in the domestic market and wanted to take care of India first, Bharat first and then take care of the world demand. But then on the sad side is a lot of small exporters, a hell lot of small exporters I would say, who are in the range of doing one container a month, two containers a month, five to ten containers a month, who are solely dependent on these rice varieties for their exports for their company to perform, for their income to come, for their breadwinning to happen are now in a very very fixed state. Neither do they have expertise in any other product that they can sell. Neither are their buyers able to you know, give them orders of any other rice. The buyers in the international markets have moved away from India to for Basmati to Pakistan for white rice and parboiled rice, the buyers have moved to Vietnam, you know, Myanmar, Cambodia, Thailand, etc. So it's a very sad state for small exporters who are struggling to, you know, hold their ground, get their business going. And I sympathize myself with a lot of these exporters. We at PWIP are facing this challenge as well. One ban after the other, one duty after the other, overnight, suddenly causing a lot of operational challenges, lot of finance challenges where a lot of cargo is stuck in CFS, a lot of cargo is stuck on the roads in transit, a lot of cargo is stuck at the mill being packed and not being able to solve for it. A lot of bags that were printed for all these rice a lot of advances paid to the millers etc etc a lot of people are facing financial issues a lot of exporters are facing the after effects of this ban so 
I know that we can't blame and go to the government and tell that you know uh, you can't do this overnight government did its best so to safeguard the population the country the pricing the inflation etc but then these things and i have a lot of things more about this i want to talk about for which i'm arranging a webinar so our team is working relentlessly on this to come out with a session where i want to come and personally talk to all of you on this current state of rice export turmoil the things that we are going through the stress that we are going through the anxiety that we are going through but at the same time i as a founder of pwip i still can see light at the end of the tunnel we will sail through this we'll all exporter export community of india rice export community of india sail through this we will definitely make a difference and we are bringing various solutions for our export community in india i would urge every one of you to join us in this journey so that we can build a very great export community from india thank you